part one of a multi-part video series on GameCube. So, I got myself a stack, two stacks of non-functioning GameCube games. I, I don't know why, I just do these things. This first one is Universal Studios Theme Park Adventure. Great. The case is all jagged up, so we're not really going to worry about cleaning the case. We also have case cleaning videos on here. The thing that we are going to look at... Is that a receipt? Hang on. It is a receipt. Nobody look. Oh. Well, that's not exciting. Hobby Mall. Hmm. Anyway. I always like finding old receipts. What we're gonna look at is the discs themselves. There's a couple of different things that can happen. Yeet! On those discs. I didn't actually throw it, it's sitting right over there. There's a couple of different things that can happen on these discs that can make them not work. And here's the weird thing about these discs is that they can look perfect, absolutely perfect, and they can not work. They can look absolutely demolished, and they work just fine. These discs are tough little critters. In one of the videos I'm gonna show you, and I've showed pictures before, I'll put a picture right there of it, of what can happen if someone professionally resurfaces the disc. I've said this before a bajillion times, I'll continue to keep saying it, I'm not a fan of professional resurfacing because professional resurfacing doesn't take into consideration the thickness of the disc. Okay, so let me show you something. Hey there, it's me during editing. I go on a weird tangent about uh, the thickness of a disc, and I use calipers, and I show you guys how to use the calipers correctly, and I go on such a tangent about this. Basically, um, 1.28 millimeters to 1.48 millimeters is the thickness of the disc on average, but it's inconsistent across the board. It's also not necessarily something that is a way to judge very easily. If the disc has been resurfaced, it's still, the discs are gonna be manufactured at different thicknesses, so don't feel like that's gonna be the rule no matter what. Also, just a little note, I have a wax coating on the calipers. I've seen people use calipers before. Uh, the regular metal ones can scratch the discs, so I have a thin coat of wax on top of each one just to make sure that it protects the disc. But I'm not going to make you guys sit through and watch me go on and on about the calipers. We're going to speed this thing up. Let's go. My better calipers would show it a little bit better, but the idea is that basically the disc itself is an inconsistent thickness throughout, right? Now it's not supposed to be dead on perfect all the way across the board, um, but what happens with these professional resurfacers is that they'll go through and they'll get a disc and someone will say, my disc doesn't work, and they'll say, okay, let me put it into the machine. And so they'll take it and they'll pop it into the machine. I don't have like a good, we'll use this. So pop it in the machine, nine times out of 10, it's an ELM, um, I forget the model number. They're by Hill, it's the four pad things, 1300, 1700, I'll put the correct number somewhere. Pop it on there, it'll run through, and then what it'll do is it'll run a pad over the surface, and this, we're thinking like DVDs regularly, it'll run a pad over the surface, and it'll rebuff it, polish it, that kind of thing. Cool, except, remember in that picture? I'll put that picture up again real quick. So what we see is we're seeing a bunch of residue on the inside. What that actually is, is residue from the resurfacing compounds and liquids getting into this center ring. So if we could zoom in onto this desk, disc, you could kind of see it a little bit tiny that there's two layers. There's actually two layers of the disc itself. There's an aluminum layer in the middle that's for the data and it's sandwiched between two layers of a polycarbonate, okay? So what you do when you resurface a disc is you're kind of just removing the top, little top, little tiny, little top, little part of that polycarbonate layer on the bottom, okay? And you're just enough to get off any surface scratches. So you get a little scratch, you get a little, little dent or something in there, and then you go over and you, you kind of smooth it out. Here, let me use this receipt. 
because we're professionals here. So what will happen is you got the surface of the disc, got the data layer, that's a data layer, and you have the other polycarbonate layer, right? So if you get a scratch right here, basically what we're going to do is we're going to come in and you're going to take out that layer of polycarbonate that has a scratch on it to remove the, the angled parts of the polycarbonate and the angled parts of the plastic surface that's on top of this to make it so that the light can refract a little bit better, so the disc can read, so that everyone's happy. Aesthetically, it doesn't really matter. You'll notice a lot of the discs that I show on here, they're not going to look mirror finish perfect. And there's no reason for that. There's no If it plays, great. But if you're looking at the disc and it's all scratched and you go, man, this kind of, oh, I don't know about all this. This looks kind of weird or something. Fine. Does it still play though? Then you're okay. Rule of thumb, this one in particular, is if you have a scratch on the disc and you can feel it with your fingernails. So you take your fingernail and you rub it along the disc and you can feel that scratch with the back of your fingernail. That means that that scratch is deep enough and wide enough that it can impact, on average, it can impact the functionality of the disc. Makes sense? Of course, that's how discs work. If you can't feel them, and if you're just rubbing it along, like I can't feel any of these scratches at all. I can't feel any scratches on the surface. Huh, get it? So if you can't feel any of the scratches, chances are pretty good the disc is fine. Does the disc play? Great. Does the disc not have any scratches that you can feel? Great, then no problems. If you just want to mirror finish the disc, we will show you how to do that. But with the caveat that on average, DVDs, CDs, CD-ROMs, DVD-ROMs, GameCube discs, all the other discs that I can think of have a, have a resurfacing life. On average, rule of thumb, this one this time, is that it's about three to five times that you can completely resurface a disc and remove a layer from the polycarbonate before you start to get into the data layer. Remember a little picture? So it's about four, three to five times, four is the average, that you can resurface a disc. The problem is we don't know how many times a disc has been resurfaced. So if you take this disc to a professional resurfacer and you say, hey, can you resurface this? They're gonna put it in their machine. They're gonna wow, 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 wow. And they're gonna resurface it. But like I was showing you with the calipers earlier, the whole reason for that is that without knowing how thick the disc is consistently across the board and how thick an average GameCube disc should be, you're going to sit there and you're going to resurface it kind of blindly. If you start to get into sub one millimeters and you're still resurfacing and everything, you got yourselves a problem. You got trouble with a capital P. So you just need to be careful with how often you go to a resurfacer. I get that you want the discs to look beautiful. I get that. Of course, I do too. But in these instances, it is function over formality for me to where if it looks average, but it plays, that's the point. If it looks mere finish, but it doesn't play, who cares? With that being said, I'm going to show you a handful of different methods, approaches, and techniques on what to do for GameCube discs. I'm not going to list them all out now because I'm still kind of figuring out how I want to divide them and everything. One of them is definitely going to be how to remove gunk from the center ring. I'm seeing a ton of those. It's an annoying process. Um, I'm also going to show you how to check for overall thickness on average just to make sure that the disc is in good condition, good shape, and you know that you don't have to resurface it necessarily. In this video, however, I'm going to show you the tried and true, everyone's favorite... Novus 2, fine scratch remover. It is fine, fancy scratch remover. Now, here's the deal. I originally started this YouTube channel because I was going to make a video showing people how to clean their discs using Novus. Why did that video never get made? Because it's really hard to explain to people how to use a polish successfully. And I'm going to have that same trouble with this video where it's it's partially feel, it's partially pressure, it's partially how you want to do things. But check it out. Why do I always recommend Novus? Just all the time, all the time, all the time, Novus. Someone's on the Discord, they go, what should I use? Novus, step two. This compound, gross right, is identical to the disc fixing compound that GameStop used to sell. It was called GameStop Disc Fixer. And it was in a white tube. Post a picture right there. I don't have any more um, tubes of it. I used to have a ton. And I would use them all the time in the store. It was the recommended 
sort of compound surface thing to use to clean discs in the store. And I fell in love with this stuff, and I said, well, this is perfect. I'm going to start using this. I left GameStop, and I realized that I needed to find something comparable. So I looked up what the ingredients were in the disc fixer from the bottles that I had, and I tried to figure out kind of the average amounts and ratios and everything. There was an MSDS, but it was out of date. And I found that primarily the ingredients in the disc fixer were also in Novus 2. Interestingly enough, they're not in things like car scratch removers, okay? So car scratch removers are a little different where they don't have the same materials. I don't really know what it is specifically within Novus that I like so much more. Um, it's Dimetch's Earth. It is distilled mineral spirits. There's some silica gel. And all of it kind of goes together to give a really good polish and a really good shine on a disc. And I have really good luck with them. But here's the dealio. I'm not going to show you how to mirror finish this disc. I'm going to show you how to bring this disc back to functionality, okay? This disc doesn't work. I tried it earlier. If I showed you a video of it, it was literally just going to be a blank screen. We're going to take our Novus 2, and I'm going to show you specifically GameCube processes. It's a little different for GameCube than it is for the regular PlayStation 2s and all the others. This shouldn't be used on Blu-rays. I will do a Blu-ray video explaining why you shouldn't use this kind of a thing on Blu-rays. Go to town on CDs. Same idea, though, where this kind of stuff, when you're using it to resurface, can impact the three to five layers that you're going to be removing and the three to five resurfaces that you can have. When you're doing it by hand, you're actually having a lot less impact on the surface, and you're not just going through and just clear, clear mining, flat mining, whatever it's called, getting rid of the entire top layer. Top mining? Whatever it is. You're not doing that to the surface. You're being a little bit more specific, a little bit more delicate. You are still removing polycarbonate layer. Remember the receipt? You are still removing polycarbonate layer. Fine. But the amount that you're removing is a lot more minimal, so you can get away with, you know, using a little bit more than you need to. Let's get to it. Okay. I'm going to show you the old GameCube method that I kind of figured out when I was at GameStop. GameStop had... For all the old fogies out there, GameStop had an intranet, had an internal website where people would post things, talk about things, highlight things. And if you, I don't even know if it exists anymore. It's, I've been out for eight years, nine years, 10 years, 10 years, something like that. I've been out for that long. And, but back in the day, you could post things on there and say, Hey, I figured out how to do this. I figured out how to use this. And I would post cleaning stuff using disc fixer for all intents and purposes. This I will also call disc fixer. I will call it step two. It is the step two and a three step Novus plastic polish. Um, I have actually contacted Novus and let them know that I used this for this. They thought that was weird, but they were happy that it worked. So check it out. Game cube. The nozzle might be a little clogged. Oh, no, it's not. I'll put a couple of dots out. The amount of dots is the first in many, many steps of it just takes a feeling. And it really just takes a, I'm going to try this a couple different ways and see if I'm using too much or I'm using too little. You can always remove more surface. But if you cover this thing in Novus and you try to take off a lot of material, it's just going to make a mess. So always... When in doubt, start less than you need to. Secondly, something that you can do that'll make it a little easier. This is actually super easy to do without gloves, but I have gloves, so whatever. Also, you can see my phone. Interesting. The other thing you can do is you can put the dots directly onto the scratches themselves if you want to kind of spot clean or focus clean or something. We'll get into that in some of the other videos. For right now, just throw down a couple of dots, evenly spaced, and then we're going to take a paper towel. I have always used a paper towel, and it's one of those things that I should probably be using a microfiber cloth, but I literally have been using a paper towel for 15 years. And so in my mind, I can't use anything other than a paper towel because this is what works. I use paper towel and water to get rid of circle scratches and laser burns off of 360 discs, so why change it now? You can sing my ring light too. So the first step we do is we're going to go through, we're going to smear everything out with a light pressure. This is the second thing where it's kind of difficult for me to gauge, you know, is this too much? Is this too little? And this is just something that you just have to learn and practice and, and figure out how to do it, okay? 
So we'll go in and just get a light buffing. Basically, we're just going to knock down all the dots that we had. We're going to go around and make sure that everything gets nicely, evenly distributed. Okay. So just like that, making sure it coats the whole surface. Try to stay away from the center plastic ring, the, the see-through part, if you can. Um, but it's not a huge deal if you get in there. Okay. And now we're going to let it sit for a second. All right, it's been about a second. I'm also wildly impatient when it comes to this stuff. So basically, you just want it to dry. Um, you want it to be dry-ish. You don't want it to be flaky. If you let this dry for too long, it'll, it'll flake up. Now, what I like to do is I like to take the corner that I was originally spreading everything out with. We're going to go back around, and we're just going to buff everything. This is the third thing that's really difficult to just kind of know, and you have to kind of do it a few times, see what works, see what doesn't work. And again, it's all just a matter of trying something out, seeing how it looks. Visually, you'll know. I don't even think, see that big scratch right there? I don't even think it's that big scratch. It might be, but I don't think so. Okay. Once it's all buffed in, take a clean paper towel and we're just gonna wipe everything off. Again, this is one of those where it's probably better for a microfiber. But so check it out. I didn't take a before and after picture. Oh my gosh, I am fantastic at not taking before and after pictures. Well, there you go. That's it, that's how you do it. Um, <laughs> if I had a before and after picture, I would compare those right now. That's it. Yeah, there are still scratches on here. There are still scratches kind of all over the place. Um, but overall, the surface looks, you know, 10 times better. Can I go back and redo this? Yeah, I can go back and redo this a couple more times. But just be aware of how much you're taking off and how much you're actually trying to make it look. And it might not end up perfect, and that's okay. But just keep an eye on, on what it looks like. The one other thing I do a lot, which you probably shouldn't do, is I wipe it on a sleeve. I don't know. That's a GameStop thing. It probably scratches it even more. That's it, okay? This is, and this is gonna be the first one. This is the introduction of just how to clean the basic GameCube discs. I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna see if it works. Um, and then if it works, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna let you guys know, hey, it works. I'll film it or something. Um, if not, I'll come back and I'll run it through again and we'll see if it does it. Like I said, this didn't work the first time I tested it. We're gonna send it through the machine, send it through the riggers and see what happens. So I will test it, we'll come back, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. All right, so here we are in the game room. Ignore this, for whatever reason, my splitter likes to do weird stuff when it's not getting any signal. Let's see if the game now works. I'm optimistic. Um. Oh, boy. Hey, it works. All right. All right, so let's go back to the table. What'd you guys think of my game room? Isn't it neat? All right, so... Eh. It works, okay? Looking at the surface of the disc, there are people out there that are going, you yeah, but there's a scratch right there. You yeah, but there's scratches right there. You yeah, but there's scratches right there. It works, though. But it worked, though. So sometimes it's not always necessary to have something be immaculate to still function. And I have a stack of, oh, I think eight GameCube games. All of them don't function. And the guy even said he took them to a professional reservoir and they couldn't fix it. This one works. Worked just fine. Um, it, that's the problem is that a lot of times you will get games that don't work that are just a little bit scratched, that need a little bit of polish. Clean it right up. Works perfectly fine. You can't use this. I think this is a little too watery for my taste. Um, also, it's disgusting, so don't taste it. I think it's a little too watery, and it just doesn't work the way that I want it to. Same process, though. You would add this. You would let it dry for a little bit. It doesn't dry as much as the Novus does. Um, that's it. That's Here we go. That's how you do a GameCube disc when it's just lightly scratched. 
I don't know if all the other ones are going to be the same issue. I'm going to test each one, see if they work. If it doesn't work, then I'm going to come in here and we're going to go through the steps. You know, the first step is just cleaning the disc itself, just taking off the surface, whatever's. A lot of times, just cleaning off the surface, whatever's. Also, just removes fingerprints, oils, anything that might be on the surface that just is preventing it from playing and preventing it from functioning. So it's always best to kind of take the steps and say, okay, I got a brand new disc, it doesn't work. Okay, let me wipe it off. Let me remove the fingerprints. Let me wipe it off with a clean cloth. Let me spray a little bit of water on it, wipe it off. Still doesn't work. Okay, let me try some Novus on it. Still doesn't work. Okay, let's let's start getting into those things. Some of the discs that I have look flawless, and I'm very excited for those because some of them, they look like they have no problem at all. You know, the, the data side of the disc looks perfect, which tells me that it's either a structural thing or that it was heated at some point. Those are really hard to kind of tell. Um, you're not always going to be able to see it and say, oh, this, you know, this is the problem. Because a lot of times when you heat it, what you're affecting is the data layer in the middle and not necessarily the polycarbonate on the outside. We will get into... All of that, hopefully, that's weird, right? That I'm hoping for one that's going to be horribly damaged. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll run across one that doesn't work at all. And I'll tell you what. If, I'll make a promise right now, right here live on whatever day this is. Wednesday. Wednesday? Wednesday. If I get a disc that doesn't work, I will take it to a professional resurfacer and have them resurface it We'll, we'll do measurements and we'll do testing before. Um, and if it is dead, 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 and I can't figure out what it is, we'll take it to a professional resurfacer. We'll see what the thickness is before and what the thickness is after. So thickness and weight, see what it is before and after and see if, if a professional resurfacing can fix it. I have my doubts, but that's just me. There is a step three to this as well. And we'll get into that as well. Step three is a heavier aggregate, which means you are burning off the top layer like crazy when you start to scrub. So, we got one success. Put me up a little scoreboard right there. One, one success, eight unknowns. Am I going to go for the full sweep? I don't know. I am going to make a shorter video of just showing the process. I'm going to chop this one up and show you guys just a quick process of how to clean a GameCube disc. Like I said, it's it's similar to the same process as the DVD just the same idea, you don't want to swipe out necessarily because that can make things a little bit worse. That's my parting thought for today. Until next time, hopefully next time will be... I don't know what next time will be. Might be blockbuster stickers on Nintendo 64 carts or it might be the continuation of this. I don't know, that's what makes it fun and interesting. If you have any questions for me, especially about GameCube discs on this one or any questions in general, let me know. We're getting a ton of subscribers, which is great. Um... I am also always on, oh gosh, this Discord. I got a little cleaning channel on there. So if you have something that you need to clean or something that you're having trouble with, restore, something doesn't function, work, whatever, find me on the Game Eye Discord. Um, and I'm all over Discord. You can find me on there. Information will be down below. Find me on one of those. Let me know what you got. Let me know what you run into. I'm not trying to make this a business. I'm trying to help gamers get the most out of their games. And when a guy said, oh, none of these games work, I said, bah, let me try it and see. Until next time, thanks for watching. Let me know if you like this kind of content. Let me know in the comments below if you have any games that don't work or if you have any processes that you found that you love. I love trying out new processes. I haven't gotten any of those in a while. Um, and I love hearing what people think. I brought back out the scratch remover because I had a couple people that said that they swear by it, and I'll definitely be doing a scratch remover video as well, because why not? It's a process I used to use all the time. That's enough rambling for me today. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to keep cleaning. See you guys.